Oh, well. <laughs> I didn't make this happen. <clears throat> I'm reading out of um, So Moses Was Born. I have already done one reading this morning, but it was so fascinating. I want to read another. It's a far memory book uh, written by Joan Grant, who lived in 1907 till 1989. And she wrote books of her far memories. Um, there are some details. I upload this on YouTube and BitChute, and there are some details about Joan. Um, she was a fascinating woman, married four times, uh, psychotherapist, a seer, hypnotherapist. She was wonderful. Uh, I think so anyway. And this is the story written by Nebunifa, who turns out is going to be an uncle of Moses. But this plays before the time of Moses' birth. And we are here now with the Pharaoh, Seti I, dying. Royal hair, or royal ear. I have a real problem leaving that H off. I paced up and down a secluded walk of the palace garden in a torment of indecision. Should I tell Sensen as soon as I got home or wait until we were alone on the river? Would she still love me, thinking, as she must, that father with the inside of the dying had judged me unworthy? Yes, of course she would always love me, but would she be disappointed not to be queen? We have often talked of what we would do when we wore the red and the white crowns. When Tua was more than usually annoying, Sonson would, Stenson would stop me being angry by saying, Poor Tua, think how much more difficult it will be for her to be informal in our court than it is for us to behave pompously in hers. We drew plans for the new towns we would build, Sensen insisting that there should be gardens even for the people who are not very useful. We had expected to be quite old by then, so had arranged imaginary estates for our grandchildren as well as for our sons and daughters. I think until that evening I had always believed we would have children. To avoid being seen, I went to the door in the boundary wall which led into the small garden on which our private apartments opened. I expected to find her by the pool, but there were only scattered cushions in the shade of the mulberry trees. She usually rested during the afternoon, so I looked through the window of our bedroom in case she was asleep. I was startled to see everything in disorder. Clothes trailing out of open chests, cloaks and sandals lying on the floor. A wet pannier such as is carried by pack animals lay on its side, and another was half full of neatly folded dresses. The door into the room beyond was open, and I heard Sensen's voice raised in protest. Mina! I can't leave my alabaster monkey behind. I know he has only one ear and he's heavy, but Neb gave him to me when I was five. You have already made the same excuse about your fans hippopotamus and your wooden hunting cat, said Mina. Now stop fretting and I will pack them together so they can be company for each other. They came into the bedroom, but, I did not, but they did not see me. I stepped back so as I could watch through the slats of the shutter deliberately listening, so as to learn the best way of breaking the news to Sensen. My unease increased. Why was she packing? Surely she would not decide to leave home even for a few days without telling me. Mina looked as though she had been crying. She was crying while she folded a dress that was embroidered with moon daisies. Where had I seen that dress before? It was one of Sensen's. She wore it on the first day of our wedding journey. Sensen suddenly put down the ointment jar she was holding and flung her arms around Mina. You mustn't be unhappy, Mina. If you don't try to believe this is an exciting adventure, I shall think you are cross, because you only have a very unimportant person to look after, instead of being the chief of the Queen's attendants. As though anyone with sense would want to live in a palace, said Mina. I'm upset, because I never thought Prince Nubanifa would run away. He's not running away, Sensen acclaimed indignantly. I'm going to make him leave Thebes, because otherwise he will be in terrible danger. I shall be his sweet, pretty toy, which will make him forget all the things he has lost. I won't let him be unhappy. I won't. Only a fool would be unhappy with you, and he's no fool. Neb has so often been unhappy, and nearly always it was because I was ill. But I'm not going to be ill anymore. 
when I don't have to worry about Tua hating me and about not having a baby and about what might happen if I wasn't strong enough to be a real co-ruler with Nap, then I shall stop coughing. I know I shall, Mina. Of course you will, said Mina soothingly. Would I have agreed to this wild plan of yours if I hadn't been sure that the air of the high desert is just what you need? But you mustn't get overexcited, or you get those bright eyes which worry him. Not that it isn't good for husbands to worry about their wives. It keeps them from getting into trouble with their other silly ideas. Now, don't keep interrupting me or I shall never get finished in time. Which mirror do you want to take? You can't have more than one. Sanson picked up a copper mirror with an ivory handle, then put it down and handed Mina another a disc of silver supported by the wings of a lapis lazuli swan. While it was being wrapped in what I recognize as one of my kilts, Sanson said, Mina, I have quite often been your obedient child, but yesterday I was your brave and clever child. Aren't you proud of me? Oops. Aren't you proud of me? I've always been proud of you, but I'm not at all sure you haven't been doing something which rates a thorough, thorough scolding. Well, I think I've been clever, even more clever than Neb, and much more subtle than Tua. Ramosis will make an excellent pharaoh, not at all magical, but just what Egypt needs at the moment. Prince Ramosis is far too conceited even for a boy of his age, and much too like his mother for me to trust him. Conceit won't matter when he's pharaoh. It will take him. It will make him build lots of moment, moments, moment, monuments, and palaces and things which will keep the people busy, and he will marry Nefertari, Nefer, Nefer, and he will marry Nefertari. I have always liked her, and she will make a better queen than I could have done. Have you told Ramosis that you have arranged for him to be pharaoh? Sensen missed the sarcasm in Mina's voice. Of course not. I couldn't rely on him not to betray the confidence, quite unintentionally, by being more than usually grand. She sighed. Poor little Ramosis, I'm afraid he will feel guilty when he thinks that Neb and I were murdered to make way for him. Murdered? What are you talking about? Didn't I tell you? I suppose I was too busy packing and everything. When I went to see Pharaoh yesterday, I knew something was wrong. Tua had the high priest of Thebes, that horrid old man, who has always hated Neb, since he advised Caradon not to increase the temple tribute, and the new captain of the bodyguard, in her bedroom. If she had been discussing anything ordinary, she would never have received them there, especially as I had been told that she was asleep and on no pretext must be disturbed. Mina sniffled. How do you know they were there? It sounds like a very unlikely story. It happens to be true. I was suspicious because I knew she pretends never to sleep in the afternoon, even in the hot weather. It is one of the, her ways of showing how strong she is, so instead of going straight to Pharaoh, I hid behind a curtain in her anteroom and listened. Oh, sense, and if she caught you, I don't know what would have happened. Something very unpleasant, I expect, but she didn't catch me, so don't fuss. What did you hear? I couldn't hear any of everything they said, but enough to learn the plot by which she intends to become the royal mother when Seti dies. She has arranged for Neb and I to be murdered. She hasn't yet decided whether we are to be strangled or poisoned. Then our bodies will be thrown into the river for the crocodiles, and our sailing boat will be discovered overturned. It will happen when Seti has just died, but the people will be told that the shock of hearing of our tragic accident killed him, and that he only lived long enough to declare Ramos as his successor. Child, are you mad? Why haven't you told Pharaoh so that he can expose her wicked plot before she carries it out? Don't be silly, Mina. Seti is far too ill to be worried by knowing that his wife means to murder his son. Then you must tell someone else. Karadin, everybody, what chance would I have of being believed? My word against the real royal, well, the great royal wife, against the high priest of Ayman, against the army? Mina began to sob noiselessly, noisily. Is there no honesty in Egypt? To think the army could betray the royal heir. I can't believe anything of those horrid priests. I can believe anything of those horrid priests, but I, I thought soldiers could be trusted. You can't blame the captain, said Sanson briskly. 
He knows Nep doesn't like killing things, not even birds. So he would obviously try to stop killing people. I think the captain believes a war against Syria would be a good idea, unless he only presses for it because it would give him an excuse to get away from Bakur. Faro must be in danger. Sensen, how could you be so wickedly selfish as to keep this terrible secret? You must tell Prince Nebunifa everything at once. Mina rose to her feet and was about to rush out of the room in search of me when Sensen caught her by the arm. Pharaoh's not in danger. Tua is perfectly contented as the royal wife. She's only making sure that when she loses that title, she will be the royal mother. Does Pharaoh know you are leaving Thebes? Sensen shook her head gently. Mina, do try to be sensible. Of course Pharaoh knows. How else would I know where to go? I have told you fifty times already that he has given me the house which he built for Neb's mother years ago when they were first married. It was the only place they could be alone together where no one knew they were royal. You mean to tell me that Pharaoh announced quite calmly that he was taking Egypt from you and giving you instead a house in some outlandish place no one wants to live in? I suppose you remembered your manners and thanked him prettily. Heavy tears rolled down her face. To feel your heart like a dead child in your womb is nothing to lose faith in Pharaoh. How could he choose Ramoses instead of Nebunifa? Oh, that I should have lived to see this day. She became so hysterical that I nearly ran to Sensen's assistant. Instead, I watched my wife calmly take the flowers of a vase, vase and pour the water over Mina's head. Now be quiet, she said firmly. If there was any need to make a scene or to weep, I should be doing both. If you insist on behaving like a silly child, I will unpack my hippo for you to play with. Don't unpack him. He is in three layers of linen and two of wool, padded with one of your winter cloaks in the bottom of the third pannier. Mina took off her wig and shook the water from it. Then she sat on the edge of the bed, her lank hair falling over her eyes. Now, you're being good. I will tell you what really happened, said Sensen, in much the same way that I had so often heard Mina speak to her when she was a child. Pharaoh asked me to asked me whether I thought Neb and I would be really happy together if he allowed Ramoses to have the croup and flail. It was a rather a shock at first, and of course I said that Neb must make the decision for himself. But after we had discussed it for a very long time, I agreed that it seemed the most sensible thing for everyone. Then I gave him. Then he gave me the seal, the one I'm wearing on a cord around my neck, so I shan't lose it. And he told me that when the steward of the place we are going to see see it, he will recognize us for the new owners. The cartouche on the real mean, on the seal means the lord of the place of the living water. He said it meant much more than just a specially fertile oasis. A few paltry wells instead of the valley of the Nile. How long will you stay there before you get restless? Probably much longer than it takes you to learn not to be so pessimistic which at the moment seems like eternity. Pharaoh said that for the next year or two, it would be wiser for us not to let anyone know that we belong to the royal family. By then, Tua will have ceased to fear that we would have ousted Ramoses if we had had the chance. So we can let Caradon know where we are and he will arrange for us to have everything we want, except the throne. She paused. I felt so sorry for Seti, wanting to die quietly so that he would remember exactly what he wanted to say to Neb's mother the moment he saw her again, and still being pulled back into the body, which didn't want him to live in it any more, because he was worried by things he ought to have decided years ago. No one ought to listen to him when he is too ill to know what he's saying. When you had nightmares, you used to think there were spiders in the bed, but at least you had the sense to know the difference between Tua and the spider. Pharaoh is much wiser than you or I, Mina. He believes that Neb should not cause civil war in Egypt by staying to challenge Ramoses. If he had been wise, there would have been no Ramoses. Sensen, how can you be so selfish as to let him steal the two lands from your husband? I saw a tear glisten on Sensen's cheek. Mina, I'm trying very hard not to be selfish. Of course I want to be free to go away with Neb. To have him all to myself instead of seeing less and less of him. But 
I'm thinking of Neb more than myself. Really, I am. And it's the Prince Nubin, Nibonifa, a weakling, who must be protected by his wife. The indignation in her voice was some small solace to my pride. Do you think that Ramosus at fifteen is a stronger man than your husband? Ramosus will never allow himself to be troubled by doubts which conflict with decisions of expediency. The armor army will follow him because he will enjoy leading them. To him, a war will be as exciting as a lion hunt. He will not be dominated by the Amon priests because he does not believe in magic. But he will build many temples because he will like seeing his name on their walls. And he will have children, many children, Nina. Okay, this was the third reading. No, it was the fourth reading. The next reading is more details about Queen Tuar. Bye.